Hi everyone, it's Paul from This Designer. I recently got hold of this thing, which is an Auto Laser Master 3. I'm gonna do a full review of it very, very soon. One thing that I have very quickly realized while trying to use it is that I need to build an enclosure for it. So that's what we're gonna to do today. First, I wanna thank the sponsor of today's video, PCBWay. With state-of-the-art facilities to handle things like PCB etching, CNC machining, injection molding, and even 3D printing, PCBWay are committed to quality and affordable solutions for your PCB and manufacturing needs. PCBWay can handle it all from prototype to mass production. Visit PCBWay.com today and check out their very competitive pricing and turnaround times. So this is a laser engraver and just a quick tip for anyone that is going to buy one. Make sure you build an enclosure before the thing arrives because I thought that I could maybe get away with just cutting some paper or cutting some very thin wood of it in my room and not have to build an enclosure for it straight away. I started engraving some paper and even from that it does produce quite a lot of smoke and the room absolutely stunk for a good few hours after I finished just cutting a few sheets of A4 paper. So you need to be aware of this because I could have built this enclosure before this thing arrived and uh, I could have started using it straight away. You really have to factor in the price of building or buying an enclosure. Now you can buy enclosures, they are about uh, $100 to $300. They've got some cool designs. There are some that are foldable, which I really did like the look of because I'm not going to be using this all the time. I opted to go the cheapest route possible and I'm going to be making mine out of 9mm plywood and I've just been sketching it up very loosely in Fusion 360. So let's uh, head into there and I'll show you what I'm going to do. Okay, so this is my very rudimentary design. You can see that I've got a uh, lifting lid here and I've got two acrylic panels. So I've gone ahead and ordered some orange critic basically you want to try and get the opposite color of whatever your laser is most diode lasers are in the blue light spectrum so if you want to go to the opposite which is orange red it will cancel it out do not just rely on these acrylic panels i'm also making sure that i've got laser safety glasses and also the laser itself comes with a orange hood that kind of blocks off most of the laser. So none of this is actually certified as laser safe, but I feel quite confident in that I've now got kind of three layers of protection. I've got the, the hood on the laser, I've then got this enclosure with the acrylic sheets as the viewing window, and then my third layer of protection is obviously some safety glasses as well. And I've seen a lot of designs that uh, make these enclosures airtight, and as far as I understand, you don't actually want an airtight box, you want airflow to go through the enclosure. So what I've got is I've got these uh, this grill here, so air will pass in, well, essentially it's gonna be, the air is gonna be sucked out of my exhaust here, and then new air is gonna be pulled in because we're gonna have a negative pressure within the actual enclosure. And that air will pass through and then come out of the exhaust and then it will be vented out of my window. So that's kind of the idea of what I've got. This is just a regular four inch exhaust hole for my uh, inline fan that I'm gonna be using. And that airflow should be sufficient enough. As long as I'm creating a, a negative pressure in that enclosure and fresh air is being sucked inwards, then I shouldn't really have to worry about any, you know, any smoke kind of entering out of these seams. This, I mean, this lid isn't gonna be kind of uh, sealed or, or bolted down or anything. I'm really just relying on that negative pressure from that exhaust. Let me know if I've got that right. I think I've understood it correctly, but I could be wrong. So as you can see, it's a really simple box and I've just got these just little uh, braces uh, at the joints here. I'm just doing some butt joints and I'm just using glue and I'm using a brad nail up to put all of this together. It's nine millimeter plywood. I was thinking of using, you know, full 18 mil thick plywood, but it would make a much more sturdier box, but honestly, this is just literally a hood that needs to go on top of the enclosure and just kind of, you know, allow the smoke to be sucked out. It doesn't need to be structural in any way. It's not holding any weight on it. And as I said, I want this to be something that I can easily pick up and put away when I'm not using. So nine millimeter plywood is much cheaper than the full thickness plywood. Uh, and also it's gonna be much lighter to work with. And you can see I've just got these handles on either side. That's just so I can pick up the thing a bit more easier and move it around. Lastly, I've just designed the exhaust. So this is just gonna be uh, the 100 mil hose that's gonna slip over it. And I've just put on a grill as well because when I've got uh, this 
this powerful fan and it's sucking in that air. If I'm working with paper and small things, I don't want them to be sucked up. So I'm just gonna print this little thin grill as well to go over it. So that is the very basic design. It's a nice weekend now, we've got some good weather. I'm hoping that I can get this built in a few days. So let's get started. So here's the full sheet. I'm gonna be using about half of this sheet. The whole thing cost me 36 pounds. So it's only about 18 pounds in wood to make this. I really do like this 9 mil because it is so much cheaper. I'm using a router and I'm just going to cut out the uh, the vent holes and also the exhaust hole here. I'm using some new tools with this build. I got some cordless D-Walk tools which are just really nice to use. This jigsaw that I was using to cut this out uh, was absolutely amazing. I'm also using a new tool that I recently got and that is the uh, Milwaukee the Brad Nailer. First time I've ever used a Brad Nailer or any sort of nailer and it is absolutely amazing. If you're making any sort of things out of wood and you've got to tack things together, you glue things, a Brad Nailer or any sort of nailer is so helpful. I absolutely love using this thing. You can see it all just goes together with nails and glue, just putting in a few small hinges here for the lid. And now I'm just making the holes for the acrylic panel and just mounting this onto the back. I'm just using some clear silicone just to seal it up against the wood and then just using some M3 bolts to secure it in place. I do the same for the top lid and again the silicone around the edge just to seal it. Now I'm using the laser for the first time and I thought instead of drawing out the uh, shape for the handles I would laser etch the shape so then I can use my jigsaw to cut it out and it worked really nicely. As I said, this jigsaw is an absolute joy to use. It's the first time I've used a jigsaw in quite a while. The last one I used was my dad's old one. And yeah, the technology has come on such a long way. Here's another tool I got. It's a bench sander, just making it very quick and easy to sand at the edges. And I'm using a trim router to just round off the edges of the handle. Using another Dewalt tool that I got recently, which is the cordless angle grinder. And I'm just putting in some M6 threaded rod into the handles and then they just mount and bolt into the wooden enclosure panels here and this makes picking the thing up much much easier now i'm just printing the exhaust brackets again just using some m3 bolts to fix it And here's my setup. You can see I've just got it vented out of my window through this fan and I'm just testing the airflow and you can see that it is sucking in that fresh air into the enclosure and then being vented out of the window. So it works fine. And the difference is night and day with this thing. Now I'm just fixing some steel wire just to hold the lid up in place. The only bad thing about this plywood is that it is really thin, so it's very difficult to screw into. You always come out the other edge, so I'm just spacing it out with a little bit of uh, extra plywood there. You can see it just holds up the lid nicely now. So the difference uh, is night and day with uh, running this fan and sucking out the air. Uh, this room would have been filled with smoke, even from just doing a small little laser engraving like this. Now the smell is very, very minimal and I look forward to testing this laser engraver in more detail now. So I hope you found this useful. I've now kind of finished off my holy trinity of uh, fabrication. That is the 3D printer, the CNC and the laser engraver as well. So if you've got any questions, feel free to put it in the comments. Remember to like and subscribe and I'll catch you all later.